Well, good morning. As we give everyone an opportunity to come on this morning, I hope that you were able to get a good night's rest last night. I'm filling in for Mike this morning. Hopefully, he'll uh, he'll be back with us doing our morning devotion uh, tomorrow. Good morning, Christy. Good to see you. Glad you're joining on with us this morning. But hopefully, Mike will be back tomorrow. Uh, I'm I'm covering for him this morning and looking forward to our time together. But I hope you got a good night's rest last night, and I hope your day is off to a good start already this morning. Uh, but I want to. Go ahead and open in prayer this morning, and then, as Mike normally does on Thursdays, we're going to uh, pray uh, over over those on our prayer list, pray for those on our prayer list. Good morning, Miss Rosie. So we'll pray for them together, and then a short devotion from a couple verses in Isaiah chapter 43 this morning. Uh, if you were tuning in last night, we'll pick up just a few verses down from where we left off. But let's go to the Lord in prayer together this morning. Just a prayer of thankfulness uh, for this day that the Lord's given us, for the opportunity that we had to rest, and uh, a prayer of thankfulness for who we are in Christ, that we have woke up this morning as a people who are, are loved and precious and honored in His eyes. For those of us who know Him as our Father, uh, Christ as our Lord and Savior, and are indwelt by His Holy Spirit. So, Go to the Lord with me in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you again for causing the sun to rise this morning. Thank you for um, the night's rest that we had last night. Lord, thank you for watching over us. We thank you for your protection and your care. Lord, we thank you knowing that it is you who has given us every good thing, including life itself. Lord, as we start our day together this morning, I pray that we would do so with hearts that are grateful to you, hearts that are full of joy this morning, the joy that is ours in knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior the joy that we have in knowing you as our Heavenly Father. I pray that today, Lord, we would live lives uh, that show uh, not only thankfulness to you, uh, but, Lord, that you would help us to be faithful to you today, uh, rejoicing in your faithfulness, your goodness towards us. Lord, that we would take this day that you've given us and that we would make the most of it for your glory as your people. God, that the desires of our heart would be aligned with the desires of your heart and that we as your people would delight to know you and to do your will. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are tuning in this morning for the time that you've given us together. Lord, and there's anyone watching this morning or who watches later uh, that doesn't know Christ as their Lord and Savior, I thank you that they're tuning in this morning as well. And I pray that you would uh, just work in each of our hearts and minds through our time of prayer and devotion this morning. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as Mike always says, if you're on or tuning in this morning, send us a comment so that we know that you are watching. Uh, our prayer list is has, was updated last night for this week. If you would like an updated prayer list, uh, but you've not been able to be or were not able to be at the Wednesday night service, uh, let us know, and I'll be happy to send you an electronic copy of our prayer list for this week. Uh, but quickly, as we think about spiritual needs this morning, I want to focus on our community here in Rome Mountain. I want us to spend a moment praying for people here in our community who are far from God and don't know Him, uh, to that, the God, that God would be working in their hearts uh, and that He would be preparing their hearts not only hear the gospel, uh, but making them receptive to the good news of Jesus Christ, that uh, they would sense and realize their need uh, for a Savior, and that they would uh, already, the Lord would be humbling their hearts uh, 
so that they would be ready to not only listen but to take into their heart what it means uh, that we are people who need a Savior because of our sins and what it means that that God himself took on flesh and dwelt among us so that he could give himself as a sacrifice and substitute in our place uh, to purchase forgiveness for our sins and to make us a new creation. So let's pray for our community this morning. Pray for the lost people in our community that they would be receptive uh, to the gospel, that the Lord would be working in their hearts and that he would be drawing them to Jesus Christ and that he would make us faithful in being witnesses, in sharing uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ with those that he puts uh, in our path and in our life. So let's go to him in prayer uh, for our community and being receptive to the gospel. Heavenly Father, Lord, this is a beautiful, beautiful place uh, that you have given us as a church family uh, the privilege to call home. Lord, a beautiful community. Uh, Lord, a uh, a place that I know my wife and I are, are thankful uh, to be a part of, uh, thankful that we uh, can have a home here in this community. But Lord, as a church family, uh, we're not only thankful, our hearts also are burdened for the lost people in our community. Lord, we know that there are, that we have family members and friends and neighbors who are far from you. We know uh, that there are many in our community who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who have not come to you uh, through faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know your word tells us it's clear that you desire that all people would come to know you that all people would come to a right relationship with you as their Heavenly Father through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we know that that needs to be true in our hearts as well. That, God, we would love our neighbors as you love them. That we would desire for our neighbors to know what salvation is in Jesus Christ is as we do and so I pray that you would be working in the hearts of the lost people in our community here in Rome Mountain God that you would be preparing their hearts uh, to receive the gospel preparing their ears their minds to hear and to take in the good news of Jesus Christ Lord that you would be softening their hearts, that you would uh, be growing their hearts in humility uh, so that as they hear who Jesus Christ is as your only begotten Son, that he came, left heaven and came to earth, uh, took on flesh. In other words, he became man, the, the God-man, to live here among us, and he lived the life that we were all called to live, but that none of us have lived. He was uh, perfectly obedient uh, to you. God, he honored you. He came to do your will, and he did your will perfectly. And then he went to be nailed to a cross. He died a sinner's death even though he knew no sin you made him to be sin for us for all who would believe on him for all who would trust in him for all who would come to him for salvation Lord that he laid down his life and that on the third day you raised him from the dead that he is our victorious king he has conquered sin and death and has offered that same victory to any and all who would trust in him and so I pray that Lord as we as a church family and the churches here in this community seek to be your witnesses and to proclaim the gospel 
that you would be working in the hearts of those in our community, preparing them uh, to hear and to receive the gospel. Lord, that you would be working to bring an awakening here in our community that your son Jesus Christ would be exalted and lifted up and that as he is, he would draw many. Lord, I pray that he would draw all in our community to himself for salvation. I pray for the students and the children that we are serving at our church who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray that you would be working in their hearts. Lord, that as they hear your word taught, as they hear uh, the good news of Jesus Christ shared, that they would be respect, receptive and that they would respond. And Father, I pray for those who have mentioned, uh, been mentioned in uh, the days past, such as Christie's voice, uh, Jacob and Elijah, Lord, that you would be working in their hearts, drawing them uh, to Jesus for salvation. And Lord, we know this is a work that only you can accomplish. We know that you call us to, to be a part of your work. But the work of salvation is a work that only you can accomplish. And so we pray that you would be doing that as we seek to follow you faithfully uh, and to be obedient to your calling on our lives. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, next I want us to pray for uh, our North American Mission Board Missionaries of the Week. And so our Missionaries of the Week this week are Jeremy and Sarah, let me try to get this last name right, uh, Promsey. It's spelled P-R-O-E-M-S-E-Y. Jeremy and Sarah Promsey. They're church planners at Refuge Community Church in San Mateo, California. I think is how you say that. It's around the Bay Area in California. And they ask that we would pray that God will bring them favor and opportunity in their city and that, that he would bring transformation within the people of the church there and that he would bring revival to the Bay Area. So let's pray for Jeremy and Sarah and the work that they are part of as our North American Mission Board Missionaries of the Week. Jeremy and Sarah. Father, I thank you for Jeremy and Sarah for their willingness to be obedient to the call that you've put on their life, for their willingness to serve you uh, to go to, uh, Lord, what's really a difficult culture. Uh, Lord, what's becoming a more and more difficult place to serve you uh, in light of all that the government there in California has been trying to enforce and to do uh, to churches who are seeking to be faithful to you. And so I pray that you would give Jeremy and Sarah strength, boldness, and courage to continue to be obedient and faithful to the calling that you have on them. Lord, that you would continue to fill their hearts with love and compassion, love for you and for the lost, and compassion for their brothers and sisters in Christ that you've already brought to the church, compassion for those in their community who they were continuing to seek to reach. Lord, I pray that you would bless their work. I pray that they would see fruit for their labor. I pray, Father, that you would continue to give them favor and opportunity in the city that you've planted them in. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to transform the people there at Refuge Community Church, that you would continue to grow them, uh, that you would continue to sanctify them, Lord, and that you would just continue to conform them to the image of your son, Jesus Christ. The same work that we are hopeful that you will do in our church family. And we pray, Lord, that you would indeed bring revival there uh, to the area, the Bay Area that they are serving in. Lord, that you would open many blinded eyes to see uh, the beauty, the glory of your son, Jesus Christ, and all that he's done for them. Lord, the opportunity, the calling, to respond and to place their faith in Christ and in Christ alone for salvation. We pray that you would, Lord, just in your goodness and in your faithfulness, continue the work that you've begun there 
Continue the work that you've begun with Jeremy and Sarah. Continue the work that you've begun in their church family and continue the work that you've begun in that community. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the next one's on our list this morning are our shut-ins. Uh, Mike prays for our shut-ins each week. Benita, Harold, Janice, Joe, Effie, Loman, Lou, and Peggy. So let's pray. Some of those are uh, in our nursing home here in Roan Mountain at Roan Highland. Some of them are still at home, uh, but all of them uh, shut in, not getting out and about, uh, not able to go and to do, and many of them dealing with various health issues. So let's pray for our shut-ins this morning. Father, we know that each and every brother and sister is precious in your eyes. Lord, that you love each and every one. Lord, that you do not value people as many as our, in our culture are beginning to. That, Lord, you love the young and the old. That you love those who are strong and healthy. You love those who are not as strong and whose bodies are not as healthy. Lord, we know that you care for our church family members who are not able to be here with us in person in worship anymore because of either being in the nursing home or, or health issues that have them um, having to stay at home. And so we lift each of these up to you, asking, Father, that they would just be reminded of your love for them, of your faithfulness, God, that they would be reminded that you care for them and that they can cast all their cares on you. Lord, that they would be reminded that you've promised to never leave nor forsake your children, that you are with them where they are and that they are not going through this part of their journey in life on their own. Lord, I pray that you would fill their minds with your peace that surpasses all understanding. God, that they would be reminded and that they would hold on to that hope that is a sure and steadfast anchor for our soul, the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, a hope that knows that this life is not all that there is, that we are living for an eternal home where everything everything will be renewed and restored and made right and so I pray that uh, Lord you would also help our shut-ins our brothers and sisters in the nursing home and, and at home to know how much they are loved uh, by their church family, that you would help us as a church family to serve them well, uh, to be compassionate, to be kind, and to be caring towards them. You tell us, Lord, that pure and undefiled religion in your word is to honor and to serve uh, the orphans and the widows. And so I pray that for those that we have, in, in our church family and around us that we would honor you and seek to glorify you by being obedient there to the calling and the opportunity that you give us to serve. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Miss Helen. It's good to see you on with us this morning. Now we're going to pray as we continue through our prayer list this morning. I've got just a few minutes left. So we're going to pray for Jeremy Britt. Uh, Jeremy is on our prayer list there as, as one of those who is battling cancer. And we're thankful for the healing that the Lord is doing in him. We're thankful for the good news that he is continuing to receive from the doctors. 
But we also know that he's still got uh, several more treatments to go uh, with his radiation. We know that we're still looking to see uh, the cancer there in his stomach area uh, to shrink and looking for it to even be gone and looking uh, for the Lord to completely heal him and cure him from this cancer. But as he continues having radiation each day, five days a week, uh, we want to pray for him. We want to pray for his wife, Catherine. We want to pray uh, for Braden. Uh, Helen, I hope that everything's going well at the beauty shop, and I'm glad you're able to tune in with us while you're there. Uh, but let's pray for Jeremy and, and Catherine and Braden this morning as he continues his fight with cancer. Father, we thank you for bringing Jeremy and Catherine and Braden and this precious family to First Baptist Church of Rome Mountain. Lord, we are so thankful uh, for what they mean to us already as a church family. And Lord, we're thankful uh, for the way that you have been answering prayers, uh, being lifted up for Jeremy and for his healing. We're thankful, uh, Lord, that all the signs and the tests so far have come back positive in that uh, the cancer is lessening, the tumor is shrinking, that Jeremy is even beginning to uh, feel better uh, than, than what he has been uh, since before he started chemo and even feeling better since finishing his chemo treatments. And so we praise you for that, Lord. We thank you for watching over him and Catherine as, they, as they've traveled back and forth to the hospital every day for treatments. We thank you for being with Braden and helping him uh, through this journey and through this time. And so we pray that, uh, Lord, you would continue to watch over the family, continue to give them strength, continue to be their refuge. Uh, Lord, that you would continue to meet each and every need. And we pray that you would continue to help Jeremy, that you would continue to use these radiation treatments to be helpful. Uh, Lord, to, to continue to combat uh, the cancer in his body, and we pray, Lord, that you would continue to bring healing, uh, praying that you would, Lord, uh, bring complete healing uh, for Jeremy from this cancer, and we will give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory uh, as you continue uh, to work uh, in his body and to work for him and his family. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, next on our list is uh, our prayer list is those uh, dealing with health issues. And so we have got uh, Bud and Karan that we want to continue to pray for. Dear friend of mine, Charles, uh, we want to continue to pray for Cindy, uh, who's, who's dealing with back pain. We want to continue to pray for our brother, Ted Decker. Uh, pray for Tiny, who's still in the nursing home here at Ron Highlands. We want to pray for Teresa Hicks. We want to pray for... Uh, Rachel, sorry, I'm using some last names. I've not gotten the hang of that yet. I want to pray for Rachel, who's dealing with headaches. I want to pray for Mike and Rosie. Uh, we're thankful that Mike's finger is healing well, uh, but want to just continue to pray uh, for his and Rosie's health. We want to pray for Trina, and uh, as she continues uh, her battle with MS. So let's pray for those here on our prayer list who are dealing with uh, various health issues this morning. Lord, you know all of those that we've just mentioned. Lord, you know those uh, in our families and on our hearts and minds who are facing very uh, difficult health issues for some and others who are facing health issues that are just an ongoing battle. And so I pray, Lord, that you would comfort them today I pray that you would help them be their strength, uh, Lord, that you would continue to sustain them, uh, but Lord, that you would also uh, just continue uh, to help them to trust in you, to continue to uh, march forward in faith, uh, even in the difficulties and the battles of life that they are dealing with. And Lord, we do pray for healing. Uh, we pray that you would uh, mend and uh, heal all of those uh, 
that we've mentioned and who are on our prayer list. God, that you would take what each and every person is facing and that you would bring them through. We know, God, that you care for your children. We know that you are aware of each and every health issue. And uh, Lord, we know that we have a God in heaven who is compassionate and kind towards us as his children. We know that there's nothing impossible for you, God, that you can heal each and every sickness, each and every disease. Uh, we know that you can heal each and every health problem. And so we ask, uh, Father, that you would do just that. And Lord, that um, if you don't heal, uh, you don't heal now or in the immediate future, or perhaps your healing is, is going to be down the road for those that we are praying for. We pray that you would give patience and perseverance uh, during this time for each of those that we are praying for. God, that you would just continue to help them uh, to hold fast to you and that they would continue to find their joy, their hope, their peace, their satisfaction in knowing you as their Heavenly Father. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The next part of our prayer list is our service men and women. Uh, and of course, we want to pray for our government leaders as well. But in thinking about our service men and women, uh, we have Alan, we have Austin and Allison and Aaron, we have Caleb and Isaac, we have Dallas, we have Elijah, we have Josh and Joshua, we have Keziah and Sabrina. So let's pray for our service men and women this morning. Pray for uh, their safety and uh, pray for the Lord just to use them in uh, in the work that he has them uh, in right now and to use them wherever he has them placed right now as I'm sure that uh, we've got several of these that are spread out all over the place, all over the world, and so we want to pray for them. Lord, we thank you for those who have uh, gone voluntarily to serve the call of our nation. We're thankful that you have provided these young men and these young women uh, with the ability and the strength and even the desire to be willing to serve our country, to to fight for freedom. Lord, I pray that you would be with each one of them. I pray that you would have your hand of protection around them, that you would be a shield for them. Lord, I pray that you would be using them where they are to be a light of the good news of Jesus Christ, to be a witness. Lord, that you would help them to continue to have a great and wonderful impact. Lord, we ask that wherever they are right now, they would know that you are the God who created the heavens and the earth that there is no place on this earth uh, that you don't see, that there is no place on this earth where you are not in sovereign, where you're not sovereignly in control of all that's going on. Lord, that you would remind them that there is no place too far that your arm cannot reach. Lord, that you would continue to show them that you are God over all the earth. There's no place that they will go that you too will not be with those who are your children who know you, who have come to you through Jesus Christ. 
And Lord, that for those who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior but are serving in our military, Lord, I pray that they would see your hand and your calling to them no matter where they are. That, Lord, you are the God of each and every city and each and every place, and you are the God who is mighty to save. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, lastly, I want to pray for the family of Miss Ira Bell. Before we read a couple verses, I know my time has run out here, so I want to pray for Ira Bell's family. Uh, as you know, Granny passed away on Monday. She went home to be with our Lord and Savior, her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we want to pray for her family. Uh, we especially want to continue to pray for Brooke and Brittany, Tipton and Jonathan and, and Larry. Uh, but for all of the family, for God's comfort and peace and presence with them during this time. Her services, or the services for our bell are tonight at the church, receiving at 6, and then the funeral is going to follow at 7. And certainly, I know it would mean a lot to the family uh, to see uh, you here and uh, to know that you're praying for them and are here to support them through this. So let's pray for uh, Miss Arabelle's family. Uh, Lord, uh, we thank you. For Granny, Lord, we're thankful to have known her, to have been a part of the church family with her. Uh, Lord, we're thankful for what she's meant to this church family uh, all the way back to the 1950s. Lord, we're thankful for the heart that she had for you. We're thankful for the devotion and the commitment that she had. Lord, I think of the Sunday mornings when she would be here and it was all she could do to get in the building with her walker or, or in the wheelchair. And yet she was here to worship you, uh, to praise you, to honor you, to gather in your presence with her church family. Lord, I think about the role that she's played in Larry and Brittany and Brooke's life. Uh, and we're so thankful to have them as a part of our church family. And God, we just pray that you'd be near to everyone in Granny's family. Lord, that you would comfort them, that they would lean on you during this time. Lord, that as they grieve, you would help them to do so with hope the hope that we have in in granny knowing you and the promises that you've made to each one of your children Lord I pray that you remind them of the hope that they have also in Christ that for those in Christ this is simply see you later uh, that we will be reunited again in your presence for eternity on the day that you call us to be at home with you and so I pray that Lord you would as the God of peace would just surround them and fill them with your peace Lord that they would find strength from you Lord that they would be able to rest in your grace during this time and that you would help them to take it one day at a time, one step at a time, knowing that you've promised to never leave nor forsake your children. Lord, I pray that during the services here tonight, your presence would sustain us and strengthen us and comfort us and i ask these things in jesus name amen well really quickly i wanted to read isaiah 43 verses 10 and 11 just as a devotional thought i'm not going to expound on it because we're out of time isaiah 43 beginning in verse 10 god's word says you are my witnesses declares the lord and my servant whom i have chosen 
that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. Brothers and sisters, we are grateful this morning to have a Savior whose name is Jesus Christ. We know that besides Jesus Christ, there is no way unto salvation. And so we not only are grateful for the saving work he's done in our hearts, but we know that it is absolutely imperative that we be uh, witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he's given us that calling, he's given us that task. And so today, may it be on our hearts and minds that we are the Lord's witnesses. We know that there is no other God besides him. We know that there was no God before him. There'll be no God after him, that he is eternal. He always has been, he is, and he always will be, that there is no other Savior because he, he is the Lord. And he's the Lord that's called, him to him, called us to himself. He's the Lord who's revealed himself to us so that we might know him. Uh, he is the one who has spoken and given us his word. Uh, so that we might grow in our knowledge of him. Uh, and it is he in whom we have believed. And it is uh, his word, the truth of his word, that gives us an understanding uh, so that we might live for his glory. And so let's go out today and let's remind or be reminded that we are his witnesses uh, and that he and he alone is Savior. And so let us, let us share that good news with others. Thanks for joining me this morning. Hopefully Mike will be back tomorrow, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you then.